Ladies and gentlemen, may now have the pleasure of inviting Professor Sonia Ali El Saidi. She is currently a professor of pediatric cardiology and director of the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit at the Cairo University Children's Hospital in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, Professor Saidi is the founder of the Egyptian Society of Pediatric Cardiology. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me to this prestigious uh, um, uh, conference that we are now used to coming each year. And uh, um, uh, we enjoy the, the being in Brahma Kumaris, um, the, the comfort and the spirit that we feel here makes us all happy. Uh, I'm trying to uh, present something uh, new, something challenging uh, for the audience. It's only one case. It's a challenging form of retrocardiac thoracic aortic coarctation uh, treated with innovative hybrid procedure. Uh, Shahid was a, um, a four years old girl who presented with severe chest infection by the age of one year. She sought medical advice at her remote village at the Red Sea coast where she was diagnosed as bronchopneumonia and consequently received medical treatment. However, her condition did not improve. Chest X-ray was done and she showed cardiomegaly. Accordingly, she was referred to uh, echocardiography, echo revealed dilated uh, left ventricle. Uh, this is her echo at presentation. Oops. Um, um, looked like a dilated cardiomyopathy, but on routine systematic examination in, uh, in cardiomyopathy clinic, the femoral pulse was not felt, and echo done proved dilated cardiomyopathy with no evidence of coarctation by echo, only small descending aorta at level of the diaphragm. She was referred for multi-slice CT, which showed a retrocardiac uh, severe coarctation segment that was around 2.5 centimeter long. Uh, we sent her to the surgeon and we discussed with them the option. First option was a flap awartoplasty using subclavian carotid or both arteries. Second option, resection and end-to-end -end or extended end-to-end -end anastomosis. And a third option was patch uh, awartoplasty using a, a PTFE patch. Fourth option was resection and, and anatomical interposition with a tube graft. There was a fifth option, extra anatomical bypass with a tube graft. And then the last option was uh, uh, making uh, a combination of all of these. So uh, the, uh, in, the, in, sir, in the OR, coarctation segment was cord-like 2.5 centimeter. A resection of this part was taken off. Uh, the proximal and distal end were open. Uh, to allow extended end-to-end -end anastomosis. Posterior suture line performed directly while anterior suture line augmented with patch PTFE and uh, 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 we thought the patient would be much better after the operation. But she continued to need frequent admissions for her heart failure and chest infection. Follow-up by echo showed no significant uh, uh, improvement and then she was referred again to multi-slice CT three months after the operation showed uh, uh, um, that the coarctation segment was only 2.7 ce uh, uh, centimeter, which was really uh, forming a new coarctation that and did not allow for the growth of the femoral arteries. That was the, the, uh, the form of her iliac arteries and the femorals were so thin. We were worried taking her to the cath lab to do uh, uh, her first cath. During catheterization, of course, we were not able to get the femoral axis, even by Doppler guidance. We had performed a, a femoral cut down, but did not allow, the femoral artery was so small, it did not allow a four French sheath to be introduced. Then we approached from the left axillary artery, and the injection showed the segment uh, 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 narrowed uh, around 2.5 centimeter. And, uh, um, Pressure gradient was around 50, uh, 60 millimeter mercury. I, uh, at that time, we did the ballooning from the auxiliary uh, using a tire check balloon, uh, uh, a six by two, and then the patient was discharged, but no improvement. 
and um, I am married to a vascular surgeon. So I went home and asked my husband, uh, how could you have helped us in the cath lab? Could you have done anything uh, to help us get a better um, uh, introduction of our sheaths? And he said, no, and it is good that you did not call me. So eventually the patient needed another cath, and we took her again to the cath lab, tried it from the auxiliary, and used a bigger balloon, which was a Taishik 7.2, but we could not ever introduce a bigger sheath from the auxiliary artery. Taking so much to load, so many films. So, what were uh, uh, our surgical uh, our options? Our options were to take the patient again to surgery, but the cardiothoracic surgeon refused. He said that if we so, uh, do uh, another left posterior thoracotomy, it is going to be a redo resection, which is hell for them, and the possibility of bleeding and having to resort to tube craft. He said there is only one option, is to go from the ascending aorta through mini right anterior thoracotomy. That was not uh, really uh, um, published a lot, uh, and it was mainly published not for coarctation as an accent for coarctation, it was published for, as an accent for uh, 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 aortic valve replacement. And so I came back to my vascular surgeon, and uh, during a lovely dinner, as a married husband and wife, after 25 years of marriage, we just uh, talked about the patient, and I asked him, would you do something, give me an access to the descending aorta by opening up of, on the iliac? And of course he answered, forget that I'm your husband. I won't open <laughs> this patient for you. The, uh, you cannot get a, 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 a sheath, six or nine French, nine or ten French to go through these hypoplastic iliac. And then we are, you are jeopardizing the, the, both the iliacs and the femoral arteries, and she w this would not be right. So we took her to our new hybrid cath lab, where we decided to have a combination. Uh, 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 the surgeon would be with us. He would open up the chest to have uh, an access to the uh, ascending aorta to introduce a sheath size of 9 or 10 francs. He did a mini right thoracotomy, placed the retractor, opened the pericardium, he placed two purse string sutures through which he fixed the sheath in the ascending aorta. Pressure gradient was measured, it was around 50. We ballooned it at first, of course. I hope you can see, I mix the whole, the whole surgical, uh, the coarctation segment here. Then we, of course, ballooned it at first, and then we, we thought to put uh, Palmer's unmounted stent uh, uh, with a uh, length of 39 millimeter to be 32 when fully extended, over, uh, mounted over an opto balloon 8 by 4, and placed it uh, properly in the proper place. I'm sorry, it takes long. This is the, uh, uh, the stent opening up. Oh. Here, in place. And then again, it was ballooned again in the same place to fix it properly. And then the final injection was really satisfying. So we gave her a stent that will grow, uh, can be uh, inflated to, to adult size aorta. We can take her back at any time and inflate this uh, stent to the uh, adult size. At the end, we took out the sheath 
uh, uh, purse string suture was tied, the chest wall was closed, and the patient was taken to the ICU. Her echo might very much improved directly after the operation. The contractility became much better, but she remained to have a, a bit of chest infection, which is, of course, because of the damage of the myocardium over the four years before the, this uh, final extent, uh, operation. And this is her final CT one year after the stent. And after all, we can work together, the surgeon and the cardiologist, in good setting. And we complement each other, India and Egypt, as seen from the <laughs> uh, map. And thank you for your attention and have a pleasant day. Thank you, Professor.